In this video, I will show how I install thermocouples in the SR540 coffee roaster for use with the Artisan program. This will be the thermocouple setup I used in a previous video where I demonstrated how to use the Artisan program with the SR540, and here is the result. The instructions to connect two thermocouples to Artisan can be found in the Artisan documentation shown here. These are the instructions I used. First, I purchased all the components specified in the instructions from Fidgets and connected them together as shown here. I also improvised a stop made of a paper clip, washers, nuts and screws for the environmental thermocouple. Later in the video, you will see how this stop is used. I also improvised a simple way to keep the parts together and provide some cable strain relief using a piece of wood and cable tie wraps. Next, I downloaded and installed the Fidgets library in my computer. There is a version for Windows and another for Mac OS. I then connected the USB cable to the computer. Once you install the Fidget libraries, the Fidget control panel is available. To verify that everything is working, I launched the Fidget control panel and navigated to the thermocouples input 0 and 1 and verified that they are reading correctly. At this point, the thermocouples are ready for Artisan. Next is a one-step configuration in Artisan to set up the thermocouples input. All you need to do is click Yes. Since I already configured this input, I clicked Cancel. To verify that Artisan is reading the thermocouples correctly, press On and the readings should show up in the ET and BT indicators. To install the thermocouples in the SR540, you will need a drill and cutting pliers or strong scissors. If you are concerned about damaging your SR540 or SR800 roaster, keep in mind that you can purchase replacement parts from the manufacturer. To install the thermocouples in the roaster, I had to drill some holes on the top lid. Here you can see one of the thermocouples going inside the bean chamber, and this is going to be called the bean thermocouple. Then here is a view from the side where you can see a second thermocouple going sideways into the top of the bean chamber over here. And here you can see a detail of the beam thermocouple. Here you can see some details of the holes that I had to drill on the lid of the chaff collector so I can insert the thermocouples inside the beam chamber. First, here is the hole that I drilled for the beam thermocouple. I took advantage of a feature here of the thermocouple body which has a, a neck uh, in this location, a transition. So the hole uh, I drilled was big enough, large enough, so this portion fits tight through the hole, and then the thermocouple sits uh, resting on this uh, ledge over here. For the environment thermocouple, I had to drill a hole through the mesh of the chaff collector. And so here, if I turn this around, you can see from the other side, the hole for the beam thermocouple, and the hole uh, for the environment thermocouple. There is a metal plate here behind the mesh, so drilling the hole for this uh, thermocouple takes uh, more work. For the beam thermocouple hole, it is better to drill from the mesh side. You can gradually increase the size of the drill bit, checking until getting a tight fit of the thermocouple neck. In my case, I stopped with a drill bit size of 5 30 seconds of an inch. A word of caution, make sure you remove any metal shavings or pieces of loose wire. For example, by blowing and using a vacuum suction. You do not want any of these pieces falling into the roasted coffee beans and ending up in your grinder or in your coffee drink. For the environment thermocouple hole, I found it easier to use small cutting pliers to cut a section of the mesh on top of one of the cover slits. Probably a pair of strong and small scissors would work as well. Again, 
Take care to remove any loose pieces of mesh wire, although here it is not as critical. Okay, so if we look at the underside of the chaff collector, once the thermocouples are inserted, you can see here more details. Here is the environment thermocouple that is uh, coming this way and then is uh, sitting more or less in the center of the beam chamber, about an inch to an inch and a half from the uh, top of this, uh, from the mesh that is here. And here you can see the beam thermocouple. Here you can see how easy it is to insert and remove the thermocouples from the SR540. No tools are required. You can also see the function of the improvised stop in the environment thermocouple. This stop makes sure that the environment thermocouple is inserted to the correct length. Back to Artisan. I set the sampling interval to the minimum of one second. I ignored the warning and did not have any issues with my computer. Finally, here are the filter settings I chose to minimize lag while filtering measurement noise. Here are the results I got in the demo roasting using these filter settings. And here would be the result if I had used no filtering at all. You can see how noisy the rate of change curves are. The more filtering you apply, the smoother the curves become, but also the lag increases. Excessive lag makes control very difficult, so you should aim for a reasonable balance. So, if I need to do it again, what would I do different? Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this installation worked out. The beans thermocouple could be a little longer. For a while during the roasting process, it stays above the beans mass. You can get longer type K thermocouples if you wish. Fidget also has a longer version. However, I doubt this will make much difference. The important thing is to have a repeatable setup so once you find the roasting profile that you like, you can easily repeat it. It might also be possible to have this repeatable setup with only the environment thermocouple. You can see how well the environment thermocouple, the red curve, tracks the beans thermocouple, the blue curve. So why have both, especially if you can avoid drilling the lid? The BT to ET ratio in the region of interest is about 1.04. Artisan has a way of adjusting a temperature reading using symbolic adjustments in the device's menu. Here, you can see how to multiply ET by 1.04. This would give you a reading from this thermocouple close to what you would get from the beam thermocouple BT. This is something to keep in mind if you want to simplify the thermocouple installation. For more details about how to use this setup for roasting coffee, Please watch my video Coffee Roasting with Fresh Roast SR540 and Artisan Software. Thank you very much for watching.